Hey there friends, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands On Learning. And in today's video, I'm excited to share with you some of my favorite homeschool supplies. So a lot of these supplies have to do with hands on learning because that's what we do a lot. Uh, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I share a lot of the hands on learning activities that we do. Uh, and I um, hopefully inspire you to enjoy doing hands on learning with your students if you're a teacher and uh, if you're a homeschool parent. All right, so I have a list of just some of my favorite homeschool items that we use a lot. Uh, if you see anything that you are interested in, I'm gonna leave links below this video in the description box. Most of the items that I have are on Amazon. Uh, if they're not, then um, I think everything that I show in this video will be, but um, sometimes in some of my videos, if it's not, then I will from now on tell you, you know, you can't find this on Amazon, but I got it wherever I got it from. Um, so anyways, so I'm gonna go through these items and show you everything I've got. And, uh, so let's get into it. Okay, this first item I get questions about all the time, so I thought we would just start with this. This is a little storage box where I keep our letter manipulatives and I have them all laid out, you know, A, B, C, and so on. We use letter manipulatives for everything. Uh, I, I can't even tell you how much we use it for. You know if you've spent any time watching any of my videos that I have letter manipulatives in almost all my videos. And I use many, many different kinds. Um, I'm going to try to link these. These are magnetic letters. I'm going to try to link these in the description box below. So, uh, but we use so many different letter manipulatives. We use these, we, there are so many different puzzles. I love Melissa and Doug puzzles and we use the letters from those puzzles and um, we put them in trays like this. So I will have this organizer tray linked below. It's basically just an organizer for, it's like a craft organizer for beads, but we use it for our letters and it fits many different types of letter manipulatives. Again, these ones are just um, a set of magnetic letters, but it fits a lot of different ones. So I get questions about this a lot and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, I have probably, Oh man, probably 15 to 20 of these different organizers for letters. We also store our number manipulatives too. So try to link some different uh, favorite number and letter manipulatives down below. But yeah, we store them in these boxes. They're great because then they have all the letters in order. They're just perfect. Speaking of letter manipulatives, here is a puzzle that uh, I found on Amazon. We do like these letters a lot. I like to use wooden letters and I just have them in this bag. Let me see if I can unzip it. This is another thing that I love is I love Ziploc bags. You're gonna see that I use them a lot for different things. Um, I've been putting them in this bag. They came in the box that you see underneath here. It came in this box, it's called Rainbow Letter Puzzle. And, uh, but I don't keep it in the box because sometimes we just don't have time to put all the pieces away perfectly, <laughs> as you see. So if I keep it in this bag, I just shove them in and I know all the pieces are there and I don't have to worry about taking the time to put everything away perfectly because when you have little kids and you're homeschooling, sometimes it's just crazy. So anyways, I have them in this bag. This is a um, two gallon bag. It's the Hefty brand Ziploc, and uh, I love those as well, but I also use a lot of the gallon size, which you'll see in a minute. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about manipulatives. So I have a few of the ones that we've been using a lot um, here, and you probably see them in my videos a lot. So we use them for counting, we use them for marking our answers, we use them for all sorts of math, all sorts of phonics activities, uh, Again, I'm referring back to my videos. If you see my videos, you kind of see how we use these different things. This is one of my, these are one of my favorites. So these are just pom-poms. I will link the ones that I have below because I found, there's different kinds of pom-poms. You can get, like the ones at the dollar store, I don't really like because they're lots, um, I don't know, they're, they're just squishier so they don't stay on the magnets as well. But I found a set on Amazon that I really like because they're just, um, more hefty, I guess you could say. And this is one of them. They're just, um, you can't tell from the video, but when you feel them, you can tell. So anyways, I'll have them linked below, but we add magnets to the bottom of them. You can get magnets in any craft store. Um, and we, I just use my hot glue and I hot glue them to the bottom of them. And then you can use them on a cookie sheet, um, 
to do all sorts of things. So they're really great. And the reason I say cookie sheet is because the magnets stick. Uh, but yeah, we use these all the time. So there's one set. Here's another set I really have been enjoying using. These are the pet counters from Learning Resources and uh, all sorts of different colors. There's dog and there's a bunny and there's fish and uh, there's birds. I've had these in my videos before. Um, so I really like this set. We also have a transportation set. Uh, we have a zoo animal set, which I think of all the different ones. We have a couple of different sets. So learning resources does make a lot of fun counting counters. You can use them for sorting. You can use them for counting. You can use them for all sorts of early math. We also you can even use them in phonics. Um, we can uh, take out the, like say dog, and then we can use our magnetic letters to spell dog. We can spell bird and talk about the different sounds. We can use them for beginning sounds, ending sounds. Um, I mean, you could just use them for so many different things. So anyways, there's that set. And then um, speaking of letters, this is another set I really like. Now, I'm not a Sesame Street person. Like we don't, my kids don't even know what Sesame Street is. <laughs> but I really love this set of numbers. So this comes with, it's Cookie Monster, I think. And it comes with numbers on this side and then like just some little cookies on this side that they can use to count. And we use the numbers all the time for this, especially with, uh, mostly with my preschoolers. So because the numbers are so big that um, it's great for their little hands. And so they can pull them out and use them in the different activities that we're doing. We match up numerals and then we count out uh, objects and all sorts of things that you've seen in my videos. So this is a good set and it comes with uh, an alphabet set as well. I think the alphabet set is red. So I think it's Elmo or something. And uh, we have it too, I just didn't pull it out. And it has all of the alphabet letters and they're about the same size as these numbers. So it's really nice because they're nice and big. So we use that as well. So. There's that. And then for math, um, and you've seen, I this is just a sampling of some of my favorite manipulatives. We have a million different <laughs> ones. And so as I go through my videos from now on, I'll try to link below if I use different manipulatives in my videos from now on. But I pulled out some of my favorites. So like the, the magnet uh, pom-poms are some of my favorites. The learning resources manipulatives a favorite. And these, of course, are favorites. Uh, these are a favorite of any teacher. These are snap cubes. Uh, when I was teaching, we used to have the Unifix, we called them Unifix cubes because I think that's the brand that first came out with them or whatever. Um, so you might find them as Unifix, Unifix cubes or snap cubes. I will link below the set that I have. Um, and Basically, they're wonderful because you can take them apart, use them as counters, you can put them together. Great for um, what I've been noticing recently with my second grader is multiplication because you can make groups, uh, groups of three. So here's two groups of three. So two times three is six. Uh, super, super great. And then they can take them apart and they can physically see the two groups of six. So yeah, awesome, awesome for just basic counting. Uh, we've used them for marking our answers on our hands-on activities uh, in our in the curriculums curriculum that I've written. Just they're super super great. So yeah, a set of snap cubes are awesome to have on hand. I'm sure almost every elementary school teacher has a set of those. Okay, so let's get into some other things, more officey type supplies. Okay, so well first. Um, actually, take that back. Um, I'm going to show you this first, and then I'll get into the office type supplies. Okay, so this bin. I get questions all the time about these bins because this is where I keep um, all of my... I'm trying to... Sorry, fix this camera. This is where I keep all of my curriculum, basically, my hands-on activities. When I write my curriculum and I print it out and I put it together, I keep them in these bins. This particular bin is um, the alphabet unit of my hands-on to learn preschool curriculum. And so I have actually two bins like this because there's so many activities uh, for alphabet, but this is just one of them. And I'm gonna open it up. It, it, they're really nice. They're, they're uh, the size to fit an eight and a half by 11 paper. A little, they're a little bit bigger so that the paper isn't um, 
tight in there. And there's, you know, these little blue clips, I guess you could say. You take the lid off. And then inside you will see just different activities from the curriculum. These are our alphabet dogs, alphabet carnival activity, letter sorting it with letters P and Q. I have uh, farming for V, W, and X. Just all of our different activities from the hands-on to learn preschool curriculum that have to do with the alphabet. So they're all in here and they're all kind of... So now, um, as you see, I have them in Ziploc bags, so I like to use these ones. This is the, the gallon size bag, and then this is a quart size bag. So I use the quart size or the gallon size. Uh, in my curriculum, I make these labels that you can print out, and I'm gonna show you the label paper that I use for that, so let's see. So this is the label paper I use for it. It's the Avery Labels. 5353 three. they are the full sheet shipping labels and again I'll have a link below this video um, in the description box to this this particular box I buy a big box this is the yeah this comes with a hundred labels and basically they're a full sheet so let me just pull one out I keep all my extra scraps but let me pull like a full sheet out and show you so they're a full sheet so you can print out you can make like your own stickers and stuff with these print whatever you want and then cut it out and stick it on um stick it on so that's what i do so that's what you see here so this label here i printed on one of those uh this label is the uh, direction card that comes in my curriculum. And I printed it on there and I just peel off the back and stick it on the bag and then we always know what's inside and how to do that activity, okay? And it, I even put on here like uh, Alphabet Center, it says Unit 3, Week 9, so I kinda know uh, when I'm supposed to be using that. So that comes with the curriculum. Same thing here, this one I just put on a gallon size bag instead of a quart size bag because the um, activity needed, the, the activity was a bit longer so it needed a bigger bag. So if it can use a smaller bag then I fit it on the smaller bag like this activity. But if it needs a bigger bag, this uh, bag has two activities in it. So I actually printed out, um, I used the whole sheet and just printed out both labels um, for this one. So yeah, those labels come in really handy and then everything is organized. Everything's in its bag. It has its label. I know exactly um, what I have, how to use it, and then I keep it in these wonderful Sterilite bins. And I will have these Sterilite bins linked as well. So, and then this label here is also was also printed out on that Avery label paper. And I just peel off the back and stuck it onto the front of this container so yeah i get questions about these containers and my labels and things all the time so there you go i will have that link below all right then also when i am laminating um those activities these are the laminating pouches i use i just have a home uh scotch home thermal laminator it's nothing special it's just a personal laminator and then these are the pouches that i use with my laminator. They're just thermal laminating pouches and I just stick whatever I want to laminate inside them. I guess I'll pull them out. So they look like this and you basically peel them apart. You stick whatever you want to laminate inside, close it, and then you just stick this through your laminating machine. So I will link below. I didn't pull my laminating machine out to show you guys, but I'll link one below. Um, a Scotch brand will. I don't know if they still make mine. If they do, I'll link mine. If not, I will link a different one that uses these sheets. But yeah, so, because mine is pretty old. I've had it now for like eight years. Okay, getting into a few other more office-y kind of supplies. Let's see. I feel like I'm missing a few things. I might be. All right, um, but anyway, let's get into this. So these are just Velcro dots. I love to use Velcro dots on our activities just to make them more interactive. So I'll leave those linked below, but you can get Velcro dots at any craft store. But if you want to get them online, this, this particular one that I'm holding right here came from Amazon. All right, and then I also get these at Amazon. These are game spinners and they're pretty cheap. They come in a big pack and we use them for all sorts of things. If you saw, in fact, let me look back in here. 
there was an activity in here that had one. Let me see. Yep. Right here. Uh, pull it up. So this is JKL, the letters JK and L, and they have to spin and they have to cover up. So if they landed on K, then they would have to cover up kangaroo or, or one of the pictures that begins with K. So I use these all the time. And basically this is just attached with a um, piece of tape. And then I can take it off, see? And I can use it on another activity if I want to. So, let me just stick that back on there. And it stays perfectly fine. They, I mean, they can they can spin it. So, there's that. All right, and then something else we use all the time. I don't know if you can see these. They're super tiny, but they are book rings. I'm going to open it here. And we use these all the time to make little booklets. Uh, I use these a lot in my phonics for reading curriculum. If you've seen our uh, activity books and things. So, I love those. So I will link those because I get questions about where I get my book rings. Those are from Amazon as well. Okay, so a lot of our activities need dry erase markers and we have like mats or different um, things that we need to be working on with dry erase markers. So I love these plastic sleeves that you can put the paper in and then the kids can write on it and it erases really easily. And they come in a, a pack of like rainbow colors. I just have two of them here right now because the other ones are being, they're being used in our activities that I have set up for this week. So <laughs> I just have the blue and the black one here to show you, but they do come with like yellow and pink and green and they come in like a big rainbow pack. And uh, these are, they're really sturdy. We just reuse them over and over and over again. I just transfer them to different activities. So they're super great. Um, again, I got them off of Amazon, so I'll leave the link below. But you can also, if you don't want to get these, you can also just use the little plastic sleeves that are made for binders. So let me pull this back out. So this activity that you saw here um, has one of these little plastic sleeves. So instead of using that, you could use a plastic sleeve. The plastic sleeves, I will say, are a little bit more flimsy. So if you want something that's going to last and you can use it over and over again, I suggest getting these just because they're super um, thick and they keep the paper in there, especially if you're working with little kids, let's say preschool age. Um, these are just easier. And again, I just pull them out for whatever activity I'm using and then I put the activity away and we reuse them. So I used to always laminate my sheets, my big sheets like this and but then I was like why am I continually over and over again laminating these big sheets and wasting lamination and my time when I can just buy one pack of these and just reuse them over and over again for all of our different activities so that's what I did so from so now I only laminate things that need to be cut out like cards or different things but if it's a full sheet um, I just use these and I don't worry about laminating anymore. So again, if you use these, you could just use a plastic sleeve like I have here. And I have a feeling that I have this in a plastic sleeve because I wanted to keep this um, spinner with it. And since we reuse these all the time, I just put a plastic sleeve in here that I could keep it in. But if you had an activity that didn't have a spinner that you needed to use, then of course, these are super great. So, and you've seen these probably in a lot of my videos. Okay, let's talk about activity trays. Here I have a bunch of activities already laid out for my children on activity trays. The set that I get comes with these different colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. I think those are all the colors it comes with. And they're super great. Now you could use just cookie sheets if you want. Uh, I do at sometimes use cookie sheets. Um, and you could just not put their activities on a tray. But for me, the trays are really awesome. So let me just move those ones off to the side and we just look at this red one here. Okay, so I love these trays because first of all, they're big. If you notice, like here's a, a, a big gallon size bag and it fits over here and you still have like all of this Stuff. Now, I wouldn't normally have this sitting here. When they, he's about to do that activity, it would just look like this. But the, the great thing about these is like when you have manipulatives, like you notice these um, pom-poms, 
they're not falling off they kind of all everything's gathered together these are basically just art trays they're art activity trays but the the lip on them up here is nice and tall so like all of these little guys and stuff they're not falling all over the table when we're doing our activities they're all contained in this tray so i really love these trays um and they're better than a cookie sheet when you have a lot of manipulatives like this activity because uh the cookie sheet's lip doesn't come up as high so at least the ones that I have. Uh, I don't know, maybe you could find a cookie sheet that comes up higher, but these ones are great. They're also super sturdy. They're not going anywhere, they're not breaking. Uh, so I love that as well. They're not super cheap, I will say. So when you, um, if you click on the link below, you'll see, I think they're like 20 some dollars uh, for a pack. So they're not like super cheap, um, but they were worth it for me to me because I just I use them all the time and then what I do is I lay out all of their activities and they're all set to go so then I just have to grab the tray and we're ready to go um, so I love that like this particular activity is counting so it's farm animal um, themed and so what they do like for these ones it's 10 frames so they would count one two three four with our magnetic um, pom-poms here but then I also have the animals because if we use the other sheets, so these ones are the 10 frames and then these activity ones, you count with the animals. So this has one horse, one, and then he would find the horse. Where's the horse? Here it is. <laughs> and he would place it on top and count one. And here's another example, five chickens. So um, I only have one on here so he could use all his different animals, but you get the idea, you're counting one, two, three, four, five, and he's using his animals from the farm. They're all farm animals here. So you get the idea, and then that way we can talk about, these are chickens, chickens, and we're counting. So anyways, I won't go too into the activity because this is not an activity video. <laughs> But if you've never seen any of my activity videos, I would highly suggest you check those out because I go through all the different activities that my kiddos are doing and how we do them and it's a lot of fun. So that's what this activity is, but basically I was just showing you the trays. I love uh, laying everything out on the trays. So I have like that tray and then I have, here's the yellow one and I have laid out some phonics activities for my first grader which I have to do a video on these so I will be doing a video on this soon. I have laid out some other phonics activities on this green tray for uh, my second grader. He's just uh, going back over diphthongs real quick as we review. So I have our, in fact I think I mentioned these flip it books and see how I use the book ring that I was talking about earlier. I just punch a hole and I use that book ring and then he flips through his book and he fills out all of the different dip, dip thongs, excuse me, that are missing. So haunt, A-U, claw, A-W. So yeah, he just has to fill them out. Point, O-I, moon, O-O. But yeah, anyway. And I have just like a sticky note here telling me something else that I want to do with him with that. <clears throat> and these are just diphthong puzzles. So anyway, yep, so I have it laid out on that tray. And the other tray I had here was this blue one. I have laid out everything for my <clears throat> preschooler to work on shapes. So this is a shape activity that came from my vocabulary for preschool. So this is working on shape vocabulary. So it's math and vocabulary at the same time. So here's, and look, notice I have a spinner down in here because this activity obviously uses spinners. And then I have a puzzle to use with it. This is a Melissa and Doug shape puzzle. Um, so yeah, uh, love, love, love these trays. They are awesome. Okay, these last few items I have here. This is an easel, can you see that? It's a stand-up easel that you can take apart and we use it all the time it's magnetic and also you can use dry erase on it so we love it and it is by look here um scholastic 
little red toolbox and I will leave a link below because I got it on Amazon it's double-sided so you can you put you know magnets over here if you want and dry erase over here or if you've got more than one student you can have one student working on this side and one student working on this side we love it and I have two of them because we've used the first one so so much that um, I had to get another one <laughs> okay and then same thing with this this is a pocket chart and it also stands up it doesn't come apart but you just fold it and it goes flat so it is awesome and it folds you know out and it has both double-sided so you can just set it up and again I got this one off of Amazon as well so I think that's it this is like my stack of all the stuff that I was showing you and yeah I think that that's it those are some of my favorite items hey guys I'm actually at my desk right now because there was one other item that I completely forgot to show you that I definitely can't leave out of this video because we love it and we use a lot this is our 100 chart with the movable pieces. So you can take these pieces out. Now, currently I have it in a Ziploc bag. It's the double gallon size. I know I've showed this in my videos before with some of our hands-on activities. And I'm gonna leave a link below. This one is created by Learning Resources and it's just wonderful you can take these pieces out yeah so i just wanted to show you guys this really quick it comes in handy for all sorts of math okay so really quick before i end this video i want to tell you that my upcoming videos i think you are going to be excited about i'm trying to change it up and not always do the same videos all the time so i have been just showing you our hands-on activities which i love to do and i'm going to continue doing but i wanted to add a little bit more to this channel and do some more videos i have been so busy with my kids you know um if you know my, me and this channel i'm a mom of eight and so i've been so busy that i just don't get a lot of videos filmed but i have all of these ideas in my head of things that i want to film film and do so um my next videos are going to be about planning. I'm going to sh walk you through and show you my homeschool planner. And I'm going to just basically show you a whole week of how I've written it in and what I've been doing with planning. And I kind of um, want to do some videos of like plan with me videos. Do you think that that's something you would want to see? I don't want to make a video if it's not something that anybody's interested in. So if you're interested in with interested in seeing my homeschool planner, a flip through of it, uh, and maybe videos like plan with me videos plan for homeschool if that interests you Leave it down in the comments and let me know because if it doesn't then I'm not gonna Obviously waste my time doing those videos. I'll just do more hands-on learning videos So just let me know <laughs> But that is what I plan to do so my next video I plan to be like a flip through of my homeschool planner and you guys can kind of See me talk about it. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye